Things, faces, friends, places, years and moments half forgotten, laughs, fears, songs and tears, memories are made of this. I remember an election time in the States. Every four years, we choose a president, and 1924 was a fourth year. For a friend of mine who was Democrat, the result went quite the wrong way. Like Franklin D. Roosevelt, he'd been in there pitching for Al Smith. But you know how it is with the electorate. And up the steps of the White House went Coolidge. And Coolidge, in case you didn't know, was a Republican. There was an eclipse that year. As my friend remarked, you could say that again. And he wasn't just referring to the sun. Some of the old Civil War veterans were terming it a worse defeat than Bull Run. Others were comparing it with the debacle at Appomattox, depending on their convictions, if you know what I mean. For a disgusted Democrat to lick his wounds and recover his faith in humanity, there was only one thing to do take a ship at once for Europe. After all, as my friend said, isn't Europe the original home of democracy? Well, isn't it? In Europe, of course, the first place Americans go to is Paris. Where else to find democracy? But France, as often before and since, was in deep water. So deep, in fact, that the Seine was taking it all literally. And much of Paris you just couldn't get around to anyhow. Mind you, Europe then was pretty different from the way it is now. Look at all the kingdoms it still had. These my friend had to see. As he said, they mightn't be there next trip. So he rubbernecked in Spain and Bulgaria and Portugal and Albania and saw the young King Michael of Romania watching a circus. After that, he found himself in Italy. And Italy, he said, was most intriguing. There he saw Mussolini's daughter launch a battleship, which when you consider what came later was in keeping. Her old man was in a cage playing with a lion cub. Unfortunately, they let him out. And what of Greece, where the word democracy was first put in circulation? Well, as in Athens, they were working out political differences with street fighting, my friend kinda just passed through. In Germany, too, politics were well to the fore. Republicans, royalists, separatists, a dozen parties well spaced between extreme right and extreme left. In Germany, electioneering was an occupation full of tension and disturbing undercurrents. For behind all the flags and bunting, the country was in chaos and flat broke. As Germany had declared herself unable to pay another mark in war reparations, the angry French and Belgians had occupied the Ruhr by force. In that vital industrial center, a French army in full strength. Pay up, then we'll get out, but not before. That was the French feeling. Her forces seized private property and imposed censorship.
In retaliation, the German government instructed all the residents of the Ruhr to ignore all customs duties and coal taxes and made it an offense to assist the occupying forces in any way. Because the German government had called strikes, the French even had to operate their own trains. And so they operated them. But for Franco-German relations, indeed for the whole well-being of Europe, it was a difficult moment, whichever way you looked at it. At the League of Nations, most of the delegates seemed to be trying to pretend that the Ruhr didn't exist. There, the French and Germans sat it out. A poker game with both parties holding dubious hands. My friend was most disillusioned. <laughs> 